Hi, my name is Jed Dixon, and I've been building architectural woodworking, mostly in the 19th century New England style, for quite a few years. And my specialty has been stair building. I like stair building because it's usually the most complicated and, and interesting part of the woodwork in a house. The way I got started in stair building is through wood turning. When I was working in a shop uh, in the late 70s, uh, an old guy, probably about my age, walked into the shop. His name was John Masidi, and he was a retired wood turner and cabinet maker. And he had worked in a series of shops that went back another hundred years before that time. So he was connected into a long tradition of wood turning and of architectural millwork. So I have to say that my, my take on turning and my style of turning is not something I invented myself. But of course, over the years, I've learned my own techniques and my technique has been co become kind of individualistic. You can take a look at the way I do things and then develop your own style. This is a video about wood turning and in a few short minutes I'm going to teach you everything that I know about wood turning. Before I do that I want to teach you everything that I know about designing wood turnings. After all we want to make things strong we want to make them useful, but we also want to make them beautiful. Let's think about our grandchildren looking at the, our work 50 years from now and showing it to their grandchildren. Don't you want them to be proud when they say, my grandfather made this? We'll look at the design of this baluster a little later, but first let's take a look at a simpler baluster. And I'll describe what makes this baluster right and beautiful. This baluster is made of two basic elements, which are called urns, a smaller urn and a larger urn. Let's take a look at the individual elements of these urns. This urn has a base on it, which is based on a classic column base. You've seen them everywhere. Column base has a large bead, a land, also called a fillet, a cove, and then in this case, another land. Then the actual shape of the urn comes, and you can see this has an S shape. This is the, what's called the classical curve of beauty, an S shape. And then it ends with a half of a bead. Some people call this a mushroom cap. Another land, another cove, another land. These are all part of the upper urn, and then the upper urn. Taken together, they make a unified whole what we have here is something like music or poetry. We have rhythm, that, that is to say repetition, and then we have variation. We have a small urn and then a big urn with many of the same elements. Now, I didn't think of these elements all on my own. These are elements from classical architecture, from ancient Greece and Rome. You'd find any of these urns and detail shapes and let's say in the columns of the Parthenon, built 400 BC. Let's take a look at the original baluster, which is more complicated. And we can describe it in the same terms. This is also a baluster from a classic revival tradition. This might have been on a stair built in oh, 1780 to 1795. And once again, it has rhythm, repetition, and variation. In this case, you see we have three squares. We have this base, the small square, and then the big square on top. And then we also have three urns. We have this urn, a second urn, and then the final urn. But they have the same basic elements. The bottom urn here has a classical column base with a bead, a land, a cove, another land, and an urn. And then the upper one has a similar thing, a, a more abstracted column base a more dramatic and, and curvy urn, but still very classical. It has the mushroom cap. And then the top urn is the same. It has a very similar base to the base down here. It has the bead, the land, the cove, another land. 
and then the beautiful S-curve line of beauty urn. And then at the top, we have a classical column capital made up of all the elements, once again, that you'd see in a classical temple. It's got an astragal, a cove, a land, and then this piece is called, in classical architecture, it's called an echinus. Once again, this is still a very classical baluster. The, the pieces are, are very regular. They're stable. They're graceful. It doesn't have a lot of movement to it, but it looks very formal and dignified. Classical design can also be taken to an extreme. Let's take a look at these other two balusters. These two balusters are part of a set. They alternate A and B uh, along a long balustrade. And they're also very much in the classical tradition, but they're from, a, from the first classical revival period, uh, which is in the Renaissance, also known, I think, as the Baroque period. And so we can look at them, we can see the classical elements, and we can also see that, uh, the, that repetition and variation. The bottom urns on these are the same as each other. They have a big extended urn and then a very sensual curved urn on top of it with the same classic column base, bead, land, co, bead. You'll be seeing that over and over again in turning. And then they have upper sections, which are also urns, but they're really in the shape of classical columns. This one is a pretty basic classical column with a column base, bead, land, urn, I mean bead, land, cove, bead, another little cove, and then a fluted column, and then the classical column capital. This one has this really fancy flourish of spiral rope carving, but the motifs of the base and of the cap are the same as the other baluster. In classical details, the individual elements are graceful in their own right, but also the whole thing is graceful. They're proportional, they're harmonious, they're unified. That's really a great mark of classical architecture. But there are two major influences on the design of our culture of Europe and America. One of them is classical, and the other one is Gothic. Classical period was ancient Greece and Rome that went from maybe 400 BC to 480. And Gothic architecture was done in the Dark Ages, maybe from uh, 600 to 1400. And both of those influences can be seen in Victorian architecture, which sometimes is Gothic and sometimes is classical, and very often is a wild mashup between the two. This baluster is from a Boston house in Back Bay, probably built about 1880. And I have to say that it's mainly a, a Gothic influenced baluster. Let me go over the, the qualities of classical architecture versus Gothic architecture. Gothic architecture is really made as almost a rebellion against classical architecture. Classical architecture is balanced, proportional, strong, graceful, and dignified. And Gothic architecture is often surprising, playful, has movement, has the unexpected. And that's, these elements are actually in this baluster. I'm going to show you how this baluster is a kind of a play on classical architecture. This is the bottom urn, but there's no urn form to it all. It's got this tapered shaft and the mushroom cap. Even the classical column base is diminished and changed. Basically, it's a very distorted classical column, completely thrown out of the golden rectangle kind of proportion. Likewise, the upper urn, it's a little more rotund. It's got these bead details. They've taken what might be a classical design, but the thing has no classical feeling at all. It's not really balanced and proportional. It's actually a little more playful. And I'll show you an even fancier Gothic baluster. Take a look at this. It's got dramatic thicks and thins. The column base has been distorted into something that's not at all classical. You can't even tell whether it's right side up or upside down. The upper part of the column capital has also been distorted into this ring shape. The astragal is distorted into the bead and the top urn is, on, is, well the little urn is on the top here. It's got the mushroom cap and the bead.
but it's all been changed to be, to, especially to someone who's used to classical design, to be very unusual and playful looking. I'm going to show you one more baluster. I love this one. This is a very pretty baluster, also from a Victorian house, I think probably from the mid to late 1800s. It has real genuine classical elements and real genuine Gothic elements. Let's take a look at this baluster from bottom to top. The first urn is quite classical. It's got the bead, the land, the cove, the land, and then the classical urn. But it's a little distorted. This urn is quite little compared to the big base. And the urn above it is completely distorted from the classical model. Then we get up to this urn here, which is normally the upper urn in classical architecture would be below the intermediate square. And it's got an extended base. And then even the whole urn has been stretched out into a round form without that classical S curve. And the mushroom cap has been broken into a completely new element. And then the upper urn itself is actually very classical with a very classical uh, tapered column and astragal and land and cove and classical echinus. I think this is a lovely baluster. It's got beautiful composed classical elements and then it's got wonderful playful elements. It's just a beautiful example of what we see at the height of Victorian architecture. I want you to do me a really big favor. When you walk around, look at houses, looking at houses and looking at big institutional buildings, look at the details and try to think about whether they're from classical Greece or from medieval cathedrals. And as you do this, or whether they're mixed up from between the two of them, it'll open your eyes and you'll really begin to make sense of details that just seem like doodads to you before. Uh, and I, I guarantee you that you'll have a newfound appreciation for the architecture around you and you'll learn a lot about things that you can put into your own work. Before I turn the lathe on and start making shavings, I have one more thing I want to show you. Unfortunately, it's something terribly sad and horrifying. Let's take a look at some balusters that you can buy in the lumberyard today. These are balusters you could find at lumberyards all over the country. At first look, they seem to have the same kind of doodads that uh, classical balusters do. It reminds me of a story, and please forgive me for this story. It, it's all true. Years ago, I worked in a cabinet shop, and it was run by two guys who seemed quite elderly to me at the time. I'm sure they were 10 years younger than I am now. And they built really beautiful period furniture that was probably distressed and sold as antiques. And it was run by two brothers. One was named Sumner and one was named Irving. And Irving was a real artist. He designed the pieces and he did the carving. And Sumner did most of the millwork and joinery and assembly. And one day Sumner was turning a table leg and Irving came up and watched him for a minute and he said, Sumner, don't make that look like some old hag's leg make that look like a beautiful young girl's leg. Well, this baluster here has the hag's leg problem. These forms are not the form of a beautiful young girl's leg. Let's take a look, close look at this. Here's the base of this urn, but it is nothing at all related to a classical column base. And the urn itself is pretty graceless it doesn't really have thicks and thins. It doesn't have that beautiful S-curve shape. It's just a kind of a thoughtless urn. Let's take a look at this top urn. It tapers down kind of gracelessly, but then it just eases over quickly. The ease over curve has no relation to the other curve. The little land here isn't really a land. It's rounded over. And this cove is also not proportioned in any sense to the land or to the curve of this upper bottom of this upper urn. Now let's take a look at the second baluster. I'm sorry to say this one is even worse. At first this looks like a classical baluster with a lower urn and an upper urn. But let's take a closer look at the details. 
these aren't classical details at all. In fact, in the stair biz, these are called apple cores and root beer barrels. They have nothing to do with classical architecture, and they're not made in any way which is informed by classical architecture. It's almost as if the designer of this baluster had never actually looked at classical architecture. He'd only maybe heard about it. You're going to be turning your own balusters, so you can make anything you want. Turning is instant carving. So let's make something beautiful.